Good evening and salam. I am Miriam Afalabi, a member of the MacFest team. I am delighted to welcome you to MacFest 2021. This evening, we are thrilled to host our first exciting children's event, writing and illustrating children's Islamic books. We're delighted to have Harris Ahmad here, who will introduce Sarah Khan, the host for this event. Thank you and over to you, Harris. Zakala khair and assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm really excited to be here and joining this wonderful MacFest. My name is Aris Ahmed. I am the Managing Director of Cube Publishing Limited. We are based in Markfield in Leicestershire, and uh, we are probably one of the largest independent uh, Muslim publishing houses in the Western world. Um, we have been publishing for, um, for a good number of years. Uh, the Islamic Foundation imprint actually started bringing books out in the 1970s, so it's coming close to nearly 50 years now. Um, we have about 350 active titles, and we bring out between 15 to 20 new titles each year. We, our, our main objective behind publishing is to tackle the misconceptions about Islam, to enhance diversity within the Muslim world and beyond, to educate and to entertain, and all done through books. We do a variety of genres, um, but we have a very strong children's list, and that has been something that uh, I think our first children's book came out in 1975. So um, it, we've been in it for, for a while. Alhamdulillah, it's been, it's been um, an honor to be a part of it. Today, uh, we are focusing on one of our best-selling titles, which is my, my first book series. Um, within this, first we brought on my first book about Quran, then my first book about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then my first book about Allah. And just recently we've, received, we've released my first book about Ramadan. Um, and inshallah, the plan is to further build on this series and bring out a few more titles in the year. So keep an eye out for that. But what makes a great children's book? Well, a great author and a great illustrator. Without these two combinations, it's a bit difficult to do that job. I'd like to introduce our author for this series, Sarah Khan a very well-educated lady with a BA and a master's, fluent in four languages, English, Urdu, German, and Arabic, and a wonderful writer. And also Alison Lodge, another well-educated lady with a BA and an MA, a free freelance illustrator and a mother. She published her first illustrated works in 2005 and hasn't looked back since. She has illustrated a number of books. So I'd like to hand over to Sarah Khan now. As oh, one second. Assalamu alaikum. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, I just want to um, thank uh, Harris for the introduction, Brother Harris, and also thank you, um, MacFest, for inviting me um, to talk about my books and um, my journey of writing and also on behalf of Alison who unfortunately um, can't be here today um, illustrating our um, books. Um, thank you uh, to the team um, for giving me this opportunity and to be part of the celebration of Muslim arts and cultures. Um, so now I just wanted to share the slideshow with you and there has been some technical issues just getting them up, so I hope that I can um, share them with you now. Um, if I can just share my screen. So Brother Harris has already introduced um, our children's book series um, for toddlers and young children. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit now about the um, writing and illustrating process. So. Um, what we'll be covering today is the writing process first, um, then the illustration process, um, then I'll be doing a book reading of the newly launched, my first book about Ramadan, and then um, we're going to have um, some details um, to take part in a colouring competition um, and a chance to win our books at the end, and if we have time we can also take some questions, if anybody has any questions. Um, so to start off with, um, where did the idea of writing Islamic children's books come from and how did I go um, about this? So I've always loved learning um, about cross-cultural communication and languages 
Um, I was born mixed race and I grew up in Germany. Um, so there was a heavy influence from both my German and my um, Pakistani culture um, from that of my parents. Um, and we then moved to the UK at the age of 12, um, where I learned um, English quite quickly. And I also studied French, Latin and Urdu and Arabic at high school. Um, following my time at college and then going on to university, I chose to therefore study linguistics and um, picked a language was, which was Arabic. Um, sorry, I, I actually forgot to move on to the next slide and so um, apologies for that. Um, I'm talking about myself at the moment and um, a little bit about me was um, just my background, you know, what led to me actually starting um, writing for children. And that goes back all the way to my childhood and my experience of different cultures, different languages, um, and then moving on to study linguistics and Arabic at the University of Manchester. Um, so, as I said, um, the reason for studying Arabic um, specifically um, was because it was the language of the Quran and being raised as a Muslim, um, I realized that the um, that that is the one language that you know I would want to actually understand is the language that we recite in our daily prayers, and so I um, decided to go on to study that. Um, apologies, this is the first time I'm uh, doing a live um, streaming event, and so I, I've been a little bit nervous, um, and I'm just going to have a sip of water to just kind of compose myself. <laughs> mm. um, you're doing beautifully. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Kirsten. You're enjoying it. Um, so, yeah, so as I said, it's, it's, it's slightly hard, actually. I'll just share this with you. I think it's been difficult trying to get used to doing events like this um, online, and it's really a beautiful opportunity to do it online, but it's um, just getting used to being able to share the screens and things like that. I didn't quite realize how hard that would be, um, and it's uh, just difficult, but bear with me, and hopefully um, I'll be able to move on to the next slide. So yeah, as part of my degree, um, as part of my linguistics and Arabic degree, we spent a year in Jordan um, just to perfect my Arabic language skills and um, to kind of experience different Muslim cultures is what we did out there. And um, this was really an opportunity to see how Islam is practiced across the globe and um, looking at what the kind of core messages that brings us all together. Um, and so when I returned um, from my year abroad, um, what I decided to do was um, is complete my degree in uh, linguistics and Arabic and then um, move on to do a master's in translation studies. And so what I did there was um, learn how to translate from Arabic into English and German into English, so one language into another. Um, but not just that, I also learned how to write for different audiences. And one that I found particularly interesting was writing um, for children. So how do you make one text suitable for, uh, that is you know, originally written for an adult audience, how do you make that suitable uh, for children? So looking at the kind of language used, the kind of pictures used in children's literature, especially um, for uh, uh, you know, young children. And then also looking at another challenge, which is translating sacred text, translating a text as complex and uh, you know, sacred as the Quran, um, which actually, uh, you know, as Muslims we believe can't be um, translated. They all have to be um, you know, specific, they have to be called interpretations of the meaning of the Quran, um, not a translation of the Quran. And so to, in addition to that, uh, make that text suitable for a, a, now a child audience um, is particularly challenging. And I realized as part of my research um, that nothing had been done really um, for the under, under five uh, year olds. Um, so there was some amazing books like the uh, my Quran storybook um, by Goodwood, but that was for like a over six year old um, range, um, age, age group. And um, there was nothing below that. There was um, there was only uh, you know text for ab above the kind of five age group, and um, 
uh, it was quite text heavy and um, it was it didn't compare to the kind of mainstream picture books that you know our um, children are now exposed to um, all the time uh, here living you know especially out here in the west but also in the rest of the world um, on a on a various uh, range of topics um, and so I think I've got another slide here yeah um, and so I realized that you know there was actually uh, nothing out there and um, I realized that what went on to uh, work in the translation industry and it wasn't actually until my own daughter was born and I know I'm showing a picture of her here where she's already six years old now but back then uh, she was you know she was born and I decided that actually there's still nothing out there I was on my maternity leave and I decided to put my knowledge into practice so everything I learned during my um, time at university, everything I learned about writing for um, a child audience and translating the uh, text like the Quran, and then specifically not just translating, but as in um, you know communicating the core message of the Quran in a way that children can understand and relate to. Um, that's something that I um, decided to uh, focus on uh, once my daughter was born, and so. What I did, first of all, because you don't really know how to go about publishing a book, is I um, enrolled on a writing a picture book course, and that was specifically for people who wanted to publish their own book. It was as part of the University of Cambridge um, Institute of Continuous Learning, and um, mm. that really helped me to understand, um, that really helped me to understand um, how to, you know, put a manuscript together, what kind of um, word count you would be looking at, um, and so much more specific information for publishing a um, picture book, and also how to approach a publisher. Um, so how to put your manuscript together and how to um, how to approach a publisher uh, with your manuscript. Um, so, one second. I just want to make sure that I didn't miss anything that I wanted to say back here um, because I'm struggling to see both things at the same time and so I'm not sure at what point I'm at trying to remember everything I wanted to say and share today. Um, I was at the point where yeah, so I guess I wanted to say a little bit more about how I went about um, writing that first book. Um, the first book was my first book about the Quran. Um, I was just trying to see if I can share a, a full um, picture. So the first one here you can see on the left was my first book about the Quran. And um, what I did first um, to write that book was... Um, Yes. Right. So what I did um, during and after the process of this um, writing picture books course um, that I mentioned, I basically narrowed down the different aspects of the Quran that I felt um, were most relevant um, to a young child and used simple and clear language to communicate um, these alongside descriptions of child friendly and colorful illustrations. So for the first text, it was really um, putting down, you know, simplifying the words and with a picture book, um, it's very important what words you choose because you've only got a very limited amount of words that you can use. And so, um, uh, and so it's, it's basically, you know, being very careful about what language you use, um, you know, choosing words that children can understand, um, that are simple enough for them to understand and, for example, contain high frequency words that they can, um, you know, that they can read and understand, um, but at the same time, not wor words that are still uh, powerful and meaningful um, that both the children and parents can enjoy. Um, and so, and so after putting that together and the descriptions for the illustrations, which um, again, at that point, it was kind of me trying to understand how do I want these books to look, very vibrant illustrations, um, with color, very colorful, um, that would um, really resonate with a um, child. And um, that's what we tried to, tried to do. And as, as we went along the books, 
um, for the first book, it was more descriptions. And then we looked at you know, some of the illustrations and if they would look friendly and in the way that I envisaged. And now comparing that to the latest book, which was my first book about Ramadan, um, there's been a, uh, you know, a real um, kind of uh, level up in terms of how much I'm involved with the illustrations and every single detail. Um, and so we've met several times, me and the illustrator, we've had um, several conversations about what I want on those pages and sending her references and, you know, looking at the shades and the colours and the detail and the kinds of people that are, um, you know, featured in the book. And it's just, it's been a lot more, uh, there's been a lot more involvement from my side and, um, and I've been involved a lot more in that so that's been very exciting and I've really enjoyed that um, uh, with the last two books specifically um, and now one second and so yeah and so in terms of the writing process um, you know it's it's trying to narrow down a complex um, a complex subject and trying to make that resonate with children by the use of language and by the use of um, illustrations that resonate. And so it's a combination of both really. And there is a, as a slight challenge in that, which is why there probably wasn't anything um, around the subject of the Quran and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and Allah specifically, because those are subjects that um, we cannot readily, it, we can't, we can't actually illustrate. So we can't illustrate Allah. We can't illustrate the Prophet Muhammad because our, um, you know, faith doesn't, it doesn't allow that. So what we've done is concentrate on wildlife, on landscapes, and on the ways in which some of these um, concepts are uh, manifested in our surroundings. Um, and so that's where you know the illustrations come in and so it wasn't just creating um, the text it was always thinking of how is that text going to be um, transferred into illustrations that would resonate and having an idea of um, how they're going to look um, that's what it was like for me and uh, my books so in terms of the illustration process then um, unfortunately, Alison was going to talk us through that, but was unable to make it. And so I'm going to um, kind of recap over um, what she wanted to share here. And what she wanted to share, first of all, was um, this page from my first book about the Quran, which um, was actually the first page that she illustrated. Um, so this was page nine to ten, and um, Alison's got a background in wildlife and landscape illustration, and so um, this was something that she uh, particularly enjoyed to illustrate, and um, she really brought out the kind of playful, child-friendly, um, you know, aspects that I really envisaged in the text, and you know, the little elephant there splashing about and the little um, butterflies and the smiles and um, things like that and the vibrant colours. So this was exactly the kind of look that I would have hoped for for the rest of the book. Um, so that's what uh, she, this was the very first sketch from all of the uh, books that she shared um, with me. And now we will go on to the next, um, so, so she would, sketch it there. Right, so this is the front cover of my first book about the Quran. Um, so initially, um, this would be a rough drawing on the left, um, which eventually was actually made into a colouring sheet. So sheet, so similar to the one that I'll be sharing with you at the end um, for the new book. Um, this was a colouring sheet that was made um, based on the front cover uh, and from the uh, initial sketches of her, um, of her illustration. And then on the right, um, you can see um, the kind of coloured in version um, for which she used a mixture of watercolour pencils, pastel pencils, acrylics and computer generated paint effects. Um, we wanted to make the books really vibrant to appeal to little ones and so parents um, and carers can enjoy them too. Um, so it really was um, trying to keep everybody in mind and that's something, um, again, that's important for um, children's books in general, uh, picture books, because they tend to be read aloud by the parent to start off with. Um, it, it's always helpful when it resonates with the, with the parent as well as the child. Um, so that's what you can see on this page. And then here she um, shared some initial sketches and the uh, final illustrations from um, my first book about the Quran as well. This was from the initial, um, from the first book. 
and um, she again also um, uh, you know um, told me that she that she particularly um, enjoyed drawing these um, landscapes and wildlife which is something that she's done uh, previously as well um, she one second switching between the screens again um, right Yeah, and then we will move on to the next screen, which is, ah, sorry, I'm going forward, not meant to go forward yet. Okay, um, right, so uh, another thing she just wanted to share as well was just how she's um, focused on landscapes, animals and people, and um, how she's loved working together with myself and Cube to um, kind of uh, respond to the challenge of not being able to illustrate certain things and then using her kind of creative uh, create creativity to, um, to really make the illustrations and um, you know the illustrations as magical as possible especially in the Ramadan book now we've tried to make it extremely magical because this is now um, you know the, the one month um, that is a, a very special month for Muslims and we try to do the same with the other ones so like using certain um, shades and light and things like that to um, to to really put emphasis on uh, the things that we can't illustrate but that we have such um, that we are in awe of and we uh, you know we, we have to um, we have to try and illustrate it in a way that that would then resonate and really make them as positive as possible because a lot of the um, kind of um, a lot of the books that were out there, uh, especially for the young children, um, they were quite dry. Uh, um, uh, you know, they, they weren't um, uh, they weren't as appealing maybe as um, other mainstream books. And so this is something that um, Alison did a great job in, you know, bringing that text to life and helping me um, produce books that would really um, carry forward our vision. Uh, in terms of how these books would look. Um, so now, um, the middle bit of this um, presentation is the actual um, book reading itself. So I just wanna take a little breather and um, have some water before I do the actual book reading of um, my first book about Ramadan, if that's okay. Um, maybe if there's a couple of questions that anybody has just around the writing and illustration process. And I'm really sorry that it was a little bit, um, you know, uh, not very polished um, because I'm having issues here trying to um, flip between the screens and things and I can only see the slideshow and not my notes and I can't see um, anybody else on that screen so it, it's slightly difficult but um, so please accept my apologies I'm going to have a sip of water and if there are any questions then um, just based on that first half of the um, presentation then please do ask them and I think um, one of the sisters Mariam will be picking them up for me if there are any questions um, on that. Thank you, Sarah. Please uh, take a drink. Uh, Mariam, if uh, there is a question, I think. And one of them is, uh, did you find the illustrator or did your publisher find her for you? So the illustrator was found by my publisher. And um, when I submitted the manuscript, I uh, sent along descriptions of the illustrations that I wanted. So I, um, you know, I showed them some examples from other books, but then you know what I wanted, and um, and they went off to find um, Alison. And Alison actually said um, she was the illustrator Ali Lodge. She told me that um, she'd been meaning to do a project with Cube for a while, and when this came up, she really felt that it suited her style of illustration. And so that's where that all started. And um, yeah, that that so they found in short they found Alison the illustrator. Thank you very much, um, Sarah. The, the next question is um, if you, uh, from AXA. She's asking if you'd like to share some tips on how to improve your writing. Um, so I think in terms of tips for how to improve your writing, it really is just um, understanding your audience. Um, so who, who are you writing for and what are their expectations? Um, so, you know, if they're children, then it has to be something that they enjoy. 
um, it has to be something that they can understand. You know, if the if the words are way too complex um, or way too um, dry for them to relate to, then it's not it's not going to be suitable. Um, so it's really just understanding your target audience. That would be my number one tip. And then number two is just writing, um, because a lot of the time is actually. Um, you know, if you if you put pen to paper and then just keep editing it, editing it and um, looking over it, don't just submit your first draft, you know, really go over it again and again before you submit it. Um, I think that's my second tip. So actually starting to write and then um, editing your writing and um, refining your text. That's that, that would be my tip as a, as a start. I'm just sorry there's one more I just I just thought of one more actually that I would share is to read the kinds of things that you want to write so if you want to write for children then read children's books you know if you want to write for a different type of audience then read those books the books that have done particularly well the type of books that you want to write that's how you understand your target audience okay I think she's taking note of that then the next question from Selma is how much time did the whole process of writing, illustrating and publishing take? So the whole, uh, the, the entire process um, takes quite a while, um, but it differs, you know, a bit for everybody. So for myself, um, it usually took about a year from the, from the point of the idea to the point of publication. Um, but it just depends on um, what route you take and you know how long you want to spend on it so for I mean my you could argue my Quran book the very first one it, it took a lot longer because the idea started while I was still at, doing my master's at university but then um, me actually putting pen to paper that was when my daughter was on maternity leave and obviously the more you do it the more uh, you know the, the faster you get so the, with the first one it was a quite long process even then submitting it to the publisher um it took about you know over six months for for me to get a response um and to say that yes we want to publish um this book um so it's, it's a bit of a waiting game but i was in no rush um it was something i wanted to do um about, i was in no rush to do it um and then finding the illustrator and then working with her takes about a couple of months for the illustrator to do the book well at least for uh, my illustrator to do the book Alison it takes about a couple of months normally um but yeah with the latest book it was a little bit faster than that so it just depends really it, it can take a long time but it can it just varies on depending on various factors hope that answers your question I really think that should answer the question. So there's another question here that says, um, did you self-publish or use a company? This is from Khadija. Okay, so I published with Q Publishing. Um, so Brother Harris, um, the person who introduced me at the beginning, he's the managing director of Q Publishing. Um, and that's who I use to publish my books. Sarah, there's also a question from my young child as well. I am okay. nine, yeah. Yes, it's lovely. I'm nine and want to illustrate books. How can I become an illustrator? Oh, oh that's a beautiful question. Um, I hope that you get to illustrate your books. Um, I think uh, since I know your mum, I would want to get a proper answer from that from my illustrator. You know, what are her tips? But I know that she um, she always loved art. And she told me that she wasn't, you know, she didn't actually know from a young age that she would become an illustrator. So it wasn't something that she pursued from a young age, but she then um, decided to, um, uh, to pursue various different types of art. So she did some art, uh, graphics, design, I think some, um, uh, don't quote me on it now, but I forgot what the other one was, um, ceramics or, some, or something like that. So I think she went into various different artistic areas and then in, eventually um, chose to uh, really focus on uh, children's illustration. And she did a degree in, um, in illustration at university. And she also did a master's in illustrating for children specifically. So she really um, you know, has a, a, a proper um, academic background in illustration and she's made that her career. She's you know, illustrated for over 15 years and illustrated various books. Um, and so uh, you can really see that come through in, her, um, in the quality of her illustrations. But I think for, for you to start off with, it's just 
you know, uh, uh, just drawing and sketching. I think that would be my advice to just, um, you know, experimenting with different styles of, um, you know, uh, uh, write, uh, drawing and um, painting as well. So um, she mentioned, before, I mentioned before that uh, Alison said she used a combination of watercolors and um, acrylics and also computer generated paints. So it's really trying out different things, trying out your style, trying out what, what you like to draw. Um, you know, do you want to draw landscapes or buildings or people? What, what, what kind of things you really like to draw? And maybe just um, experiment with different areas. That, that would be um, my uh, advice for how to become an illustrator at the age of nine, um, mashallah, and, uh, and, and then just taking it from there. And then but if you really want to uh, become a professional illustrator, you could go to university or there might be other uh, routes into illustrating as well that I'm not aware of because unfortunately I'm not an illustrator. Um, but yeah, I can check that uh, for you, Kessra, as well with my with Alison um, if she's got any more tips for young children to get into illustrating. Actually, one more thing that you could do is take part in the colouring competition and Alison will be one of the judges to um, pick out um, you know, alongside me, our favorite uh, 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 entry. And so perhaps that's where you could start. Um, I'll be sharing the link to download the coloring sheet at the end of the session. Thank you very much for answering that. So there's another question from Rahima. She would like to know um, what considerations you gave to um, regarding the Islamic um, teachings about um, drawing human faces. Um, so there is, in terms of uh, drawing human faces, I, uh, so did you say what is the Islamic consideration? Where did you say what the full question was? Can I hear that again? Um, the, full, see, the full question was, uh, consideration was given to the following when choosing to illustrate with actual human faces. Yeah, so um, initially, actually, when I submitted my manuscript, I was under the impression that uh, uh, as Islamic, uh, when it comes to Islamic books, that we shouldn't illustrate um, uh, facial features. And so I actually initially requested um, to, to not uh, illustrate the features. So there are um, book uh, books and publishers that do choose to go down that route. So for example, learning routes uh, initially didn't um, uh, illustrate any faces. And I, I thought that that was the um, kind of route that I wanted to take as well. But it wasn't the um, position that Cube actually took. And I later understood as well myself and from my understanding, um, you know, came to the realization that when it comes to educating children, um, there is nothing wrong uh, in, in our um, opinion to illustrate the faces. Um, and there are many you know, scholars that also agree that for the purpose of educating and for the purpose of um, you know, uh, making, uh, that kind of instilling a love for Islam in our children, um, this is allowed. Um, so, so that's my um, position on that. Thank you very much for the enlightenment. So Khadija would like to know if you hired the illustrator or you made a core work. Sorry, if I hired her or if? You hired the illustrator or you made a core work. Or I made a core cool. work, it says. I don't, I'm not so cool. sure what Did you hire the illustrator or make a core work? Um, so my, as I said before, I think that question already came up before. Um, it was the publisher that picked the illustrator and um, she, um she wanted to uh she felt that my um my vision for the books um was something that really suited her style of illustrating and so we um the Q, Q publishing the publisher then um basically commissioned her to do the illustrations and i now work together with her so i do work alongside her if that's what what you what the person what khadija means by co-work i do work together with her so i am in direct contact with her i talk to her about all the illustrations um, but I don't hire her, so I, I don't commission her to, I don't pay her to do the illustrations my publisher does. Okay then, and from Stephanie, oh. she Sorry. asks if the manuscript you sent to the key publishing for your first book, um, was like was it purely text or did you submit thoughts and ideas for the illustrations as, as well? Yeah, I submitted both. So it was, um, if I remember correctly, it was a manuscript. So the first one I um, submitted in 2014 now, or 15, 2015, so it was like six years ago. Um, but from what I remember, it was um, just that it was just the text at first. 
um, together with some descriptions for the illustration. So it was a general description about what kind of feel and look I would want the book to have. And then it was um, for each page, I would put a description of what I wanted on each of the pages. Because with a, with a picture book, you really need to be able to see um, you know, what the author's vision is for the illustrations on each page. Um, and so, yeah, I sent that along with the um, manuscript. And actually, right at the beginning, I also sent some examples of books that I had found that I really liked, um, that I, you know, that I want, that I, I would have wanted the illustrations to be similar to those kind of books, or at least um, that kind of style. Um, and then I shared those with the publisher as well. And they shared that probably with Alison, and then she she liked it, the, the kind of visit, vision I had. And, um, and then, yeah, that's where we, we took it from there. Um, so then, then there's one last one from Sadia. She would like to know how long, um, how long you make the children's stories. So the children's stories are no more than twenty six pages. Um, so the actual the actual uh, text is over twenty um, four pages, and then there is a spread at the end of facts and questions. So you'll be able to see that now in a minute when I start the actual book reading itself. Um, you'll be able to see like the, all of the books follow the same kind of length and style and format. Um, and so um, that's what you know what you'll see in a minute. Um, and, and that's what the other three books are like as well in terms of length. Um, and I think the word count is up to about 250 words or something if I'm correct. I think it's um, if, if it's just the text on its own. Um, but yeah, it, that's quite easy to research if you just have a look at how long, you know, uh, picture books and what's the word limit. And um, also uh, Q Publishing actually has a um, submission section on their website. If anybody is interested in submitting a manuscript at any point or preparing one, then they can also have a look at um, the submission page uh, section on webcubepublishing.com. And that will give you some ideas of for different age groups, what the word limit would be and what the kind of expectations are in terms of when you submit a manuscript to them. So the first manuscript that I described where I just you know, I sent along some uh, descriptions for the um, illustrations is very different to the last manuscript I submitted and where you know, I even sketched out this very front cover here myself um, and Alison basically took that and then made it as beautiful as she did in her own, um, you know, professional style and uh, and um, uh, illustrating uh, ability. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Rahima here asks if you will be translating your books into other languages and selling in the international market. Yes, so Alhamdulillah, um, Q Publishing, they have already um, arranged for it to be translated into German. So the first three books are already available in German. Um, the first book, uh, the Quran book, um, has also been translated into Indonesian. And the English version is actually available, um, you know, across the globe. Um, so Alhamdulillah, there's been a fantastic response from everyone. Um, and if you uh, have a look, you know, at my Instagram page, for example, um, I share pictures and stories from all around the world of people sharing, you know, the books and sharing their little ones, reading the books. And I was actually meant to show some of them today, but I didn't include them in the slideshow. Um, but, you know, if you have a look on there, it's, um, it's just amazing to see one child in Malaysia enjoying my books and then another child in Nigeria enjoying the books and another one in Canada. So that's actually, you know, um, something that we are already doing. Uh, the, the Ramadan book will also be translated into um, other languages, inshallah. And we're looking always to translate and make them accessible to as many people as possible across the globe. Well, I'm really glad to know that children all over the world will be enjoying your books. Then another question from Sarah is, uh, what other new topics will you be writing about in the future? And will you think that children will be interested in? Sorry, could you, let me just see if I can see. Could you just repeat that question one more time? What did you say, what other new topics? Yeah, new topics you'll be writing about in the future. And if you think that children will be interested in. Okay, so um, I, I, I don't want to give away um, what what will be next, but inshallah, it will be a continuation of what we've been doing, which is to um, try and uh, make the most complex, um, you know, essential uh, aspects of Islam resonate with our children. Um, so it will be a continuation of that. Um, so 
you know, inshallah at the moment we're concentrating on the kind of five pillars. So you've seen here my first book about the Ramadan um, is one of the five pillars. Um, and so it'll be a kind of continuation of that. And then the next one is, how did you come across Cube Publishing and how did you know that you found the right publisher? Um, so basically, uh, that was during my um, the four-week picture book course I mentioned. So I did a four-week picture book course with the University of Cambridge um, Institute of education and it was taught by a um, children's author as well so she was a children's she's a children's author herself and it was basically a course that helped us um, not just refine our manuscript and our kind of understanding of writing for children um, but it also um, helped us to understand how we would go about finding a suitable um, publisher. So for me, that was quite easy because Q Publishing is, you know, the leading wave in Muslim publishing. So um, they are really, uh, you know, one of the biggest, uh, if not, I don't know, in it, you know, it was, there was basically no question about it. I, they, they I liked, um, you know, what they, what they were doing and they, um, they published some amazing books. And, um, and yeah, so the decision was very quickly made when I realized that, um, um, you know, they have this submission process as well, and they were very clear around what the guidelines are to submitting a manuscript. Um, and so, yeah, I knew I'd found the, the right um, publisher when I, when I saw that, and then when they accepted the manuscript as well, and I spoke to the, um, I still remember that conversation with the editor um, at the, right at the beginning. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so this last question is more about you than the books actually. So asking if I'm okay. Uh, I'm. I would say now I probably am because I've lived here most of my life. But I was actually born in Germany, so I grew up in Germany and moved to the UK at the age of twelve. Um, you might have missed it at the beginning of the session when I gave a little bit of background about myself. Um, but yeah, so uh, now I, it's a difficult question, but if somebody asks me, I'm in the UK, I'm based in the UK. And um, I, you know, although I was born in Germany, I now, uh, you know, my, uh, I feel like the UK is my home. So this is where I'm from. Yeah. And then I think, yeah. Thank you, I think those are all the questions we have today. If you can proceed with the book reading. Yes. Um, so, I just saw um, somebody asked another question. There's now uh, the questions come up on here about whether I have a um, children's storybook that inspired me, my writing and what kind of story I prefer. Um, I think with that, I would just say, you know, something that is, I, I only really, I don't really remember any specific children's storybooks from my own childhood, um, but, uh, I was just going to say that from my daughter, when, after my daughter was born, um, I just, you know, I noticed after reading, you know, books, I think now books like, you know, that are really well illustrated, that, um, that really appeal to me and where the text is very simple and child friendly. Um, so that, that's uh, all of those that would inspire. And then where there is quite playful language and something where there's a bit of humor on me, I do enjoy those. Um, but then if it's a topic that's uh, for educational purposes, then it's just books that are very positive and that have a powerful message and that have a kind of overall story to tell that ends in a quite positive and triumphant way rather than in a, in a kind of preachy or just very um, harsh or uh, negative way, I think. Um, so it's, it's books that are just very positive in nature. So I'll start with the um, book reading now. So as you know, it's a picture book, so it's not very long. Um, uh, it's 24 pages long and we will make a start now. Can you, let me just check. Yeah, so the first page will start here. The month of Ramadan is a very special time of the year for Muslims. It begins when the present, oh, it begins when the thin crescent moon has been spotted in the sky. Um, let me just, I was just trying to turn on of this because I think you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Muslims all over the world look forward to the month of Ramadan. 
During Ramadan, Allah wants grown-up Muslims to fast from dawn, the time before sunrise, until sunset, the time of the Maghrib prayer. Fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. When fasting, Muslims cannot eat or drink anything during daylight hours. They also try to do as many good deeds as possible to make Allah happy and get lots of reward. There are some people who do not have to fast, but we can all enjoy the many blessings of this beautiful month together. And here you can see them praying and it just says as a footnote there, Travi is a special prayer Muslims can perform at night for extra reward throughout the month of Ramadan. It can be prayed at the mosque or at home. So it can be prayed there as you can see in the mosque or at your home as well. We should help those around us and be especially kind to everyone. We should think of the poor and hungry and give them food and money if we can. We can also share our clothes and toys with those who do not have as much as we do. Ramadan is the month of the Quran and the last 10 days are the best of all. During these days, Muslims eagerly await the most powerful night in which we can get lots of reward. Laylatul Qadr, the night of power is better than a thousand months. And that's a verse from the Quran, which in Arabic says, Laylatul Qadri khayram min al-fishahad. At the end of Ramadan, Muslims celebrate Eid al-Fitr with their family and friends. May Allah accept all our good deeds from this special month and make us amongst those who enter paradise through the gate of Arayan. Amin. And Arayan is one of the gates of paradise reserved for those who fast, which is uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari. So that's the end. And then at the end, there is a spread in the book, which basically gives you some facts about Ramadan and some questions about Ramadan. Um, and that's similar to the style and format of the other books. Um, so this one here says, Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah 185, Ramadan is the month in which the Quran began to be revealed as a source of guidance for all people, as clear evidence of the truth and as the standard of right and wrong. So when you see the new moon signaling the start of Ramadan, fast the entire month, though the very ill and those traveling should fast later on. For Allah wishes for your ease and not hardship. Complete the fast and praise Allah for his guidance so you can learn to be thankful. And the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, when the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of heaven are opened. That's from Sahih al-Bukhari 1899. And then there are some questions about Ramadan, like why do Muslims fast during Ramadan? And from what age should Muslims fast, uh, start to fast? And why does Ramadan start and end on different dates each year? Now, these are actually the questions that I wanted, uh, the quiz questions that I wanted your child to attempt to answer. Um, so why do Muslims fast during Ramadan? And from what age should Muslims start to fast? And why does Ramadan start and end on different dates each year? Um, I guess you can see the answers here now, and I don't actually know if, if we have any, you know, little children with us who, who want to who want to try and answer these questions. Um, but if they don't, then I can read out the answers. Um, or they, if somebody, if somebody is there, they can attempt to uh, tell us why they think Muslims fast during the month of Ramadan, and then I can answer them for them. So we've got those three questions here at the end now um, to end the uh, book reading session. And then I basically, so I left some time for Q&A, but we did that in between. So unless somebody's got any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and then after that, I've just put the link down where you can download this coloring sheet. And that will be the sheet that I would like you to share with me if you would like to um, take part in the coloring competition um, where you can uh, win a, a set, a full set of the books um, signed from by me and uh, the illustrator as well. Um, so, I'll go back to those questions if anybody is interested in trying to answer them. Or otherwise, I'll just read out my answers. <laughs> yeah, there's some. There's two questions here waiting to be answered. So I'll read out the first one. Yeah. It says, "Have you planned to write a plan to write a book about Arabic in the Arabic language for children?" Um, so I haven't actually planned to write one in Arabic myself. Um, I tend to trans. If I do translate. 
um, or write. It's basically from Arabic into English and not the other way around. Um, so you normally always translate into your into your uh, source, you know, into your uh, native language. And so for me, that's English. So I would be translated from Arabic into English. And if we do translate the books into Arabic, then we will be um, getting a native Arabic speaker to do that translation for us. And I, I really, really do want to have the books available in Arabic. It's something that lots of people have asked me about. And so hopefully, I hope my publisher can make that happen. Inshallah. What was the other question, sorry? Um, I can't actually hear anybody. There seems to be a connection uh, problem. Hello? Uh, one question, sir. Would you write books? Yeah. Okay. Your end, I will ask this question. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. There's one question from someone, Houghton. Would you write book about Eid? I'm sure you are. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I would definitely love to do a separate one even for my first book about Eid. That would be lovely. Um, at the moment, I've just covered it in the um, in the in the at, on the last spread of this Ramadan book. So it does say at the end of Ramadan, Muslims celebrate Eid al Fitr with their family and friends. And I've tried to create like a really playful, happy, you know, scene there showing, you know, um, balloons and lovely food and, uh, you know, people going to the mosque and having a great time afterwards on a fun fair, which is kind of what we want. You know, if, if we think of Eid, the most important thing is for children to really have a positive memory about Eid. So that's something I try to already um, kind of allude to by with this last um, page. And that's kind of the celebration of the end of Ramadan. It would be great to have a separate book just about Eid itself. At the moment, my mission is still to cover the, the kind of essential, um, you know, the of the five pillars um, to start with so that they can be understood in a, in a way that resonates with children first. And then inshallah, we'll see what we can do after that. But I get lots of requests about different topics that people would love. And it just shows that there is a real need um, for, you know, different um, areas of our faith to be illustrated and, and written about in a way that resonates with um, that particular age group. Sarah, you're doing an amazing job, mashallah, in the world of oh, Muslim thank you. children, for, especially for Muslim children. There's a couple more questions. I think Marim yeah. having an echo, so I will try. Okay, so, um, yeah. so can you hear me better now? Yes. So have a look. Marim has two questions. Uh, one yeah, is, there's uh, one about... Um, if a lot of costs associated with publishing books for children, and when are you projected to make a profit? Okay. Um, so in terms of costs, it's uh, this is um, there. There are definitely costs involved, and especially because my books are board books, um, the cost is higher than printing just a paperback or um, just normal paper books. Um, so for board books, this was very important for me for this age, uh, for this age group to um, use board books um, so that they can't tear them apart and, you know, it, it'll last them for a while, especially for, you know, two, three year olds um, who, who like to kind of start eating paper and ripping out paper and things like that. So, um, so yeah, that was really important. And it does obviously affect in the cost of the uh, manufacturing of the books. Um, but there was no cost for me because I went down the traditional publishing route with Q Publishing. And so they cover all of the costs and that is the um, you know the, the benefit of going with a publisher and not self-publishing yourself um, and, and that's one of the reasons for why I uh, uh, approached the publisher um, so I wouldn't actually be able to tell you what exactly the costs are I can only uh, guess um, but it's it, there are definitely costs involved and in terms of making a profit you, you do make a profit, like as um, as the author, you know, there is an agreement in place with the publisher. So you'll get a percentage, which is like a, a royalty percentage um, for each copy sold. And that just depends on your own contract with the publisher. So it might be different for different books or um, at different stages of your publishing journey. Um, so uh, th that's kind of, I hope that answers the question. Um, so we have a special request here from Elias for you to please write a book about Israel while Mirage. 
Yes, inshallah. To be honest, um, inshallah, I ha I, there is a book, inshallah, like I said about the five prayers and Brother Harris already mentioned as well, there's a few more coming. Um, inshallah, one of the ones that I am looking to write uh, next is about my first book about prayer. And um, the, you know, the story of the night journey, the story of Israel Miraj, um, it, that story is about the gift of prayer as well, isn't it? So um, I, I, hopefully there'll be some reference to that for sure. Um, it might not be the whole book at this stage isn't going to be about that, but there will be some reference to it, inshallah. And I do hope to do more around that topic. It's a beautiful topic. Okay. So there's another one from Saba. She'd like to know if having a publisher helps rather than having your own books manufactured yourself. Um, so for me, it was because I was very busy at the time. So I was, um, I wrote the book. I was also, um, you know, I, I just had a baby. I was um, working part time as well still. Um, I was later on, I even started a PhD. So I was very busy with work and study and my own child family. So if I had to manufacture the books myself and try and distribute them, that would have been a very long and hard journey. And also um, for me, it was just, you know, trusting a publisher that has all the distribution networks to be able to make my books accessible all over the world. Um, that's not somebody, that's not something I would have been able to achieve on my own. Um, and so for me, uh, that's how the advantage of publishing with a publisher was uh, purely um, you know, me not having enough time and the networks to be able to do what they've been able to do for these books. Okay. So someone here would like to know if you do book readings for children. Yeah, I do book readings for children. I, um, before the pandemic and the lockdown, I used to actually go um, into schools and into mosques. So there's some feedback from your side, I think, maybe if you only so, yeah. Um, so I used to go into mosques and schools and uh, mother and toddler groups, um, and I used to do book readings there. And um, and now that you know we're in lockdown, I actually did my first book reading of the my first book about Ramadan um, last weekend, um, and it was with a, with a mother and toddler group as well. Um, and it was uh, really lovely because I could see all the children. And I read out the um, book and we did it online, but I do miss doing them in person and actually going into schools and mosques and visiting the children. And uh, that is an amazing part of what I do. Okay, Sarah, thank you so much. It's uh, unfortunately it's seven o'clock time for us to wrap up things, but what an amazing yeah. event has been. Thank you so much. Uh, Mariam, for her, with all the questions for that, and for you, Sarah, well done. You managed it beautifully, <laughs> managing screens, managing books, answering questions, sharing your ideas, sharing your tips. So thank you so much for that. I think a lot of people learned a lot from you and seen your beautiful work, and they've been inspired from you. And I know there are some young people there who've been also uh, listening, watching, and you've inspired them to write. So well done for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much to Harris, who has joined you from Q Publishing. We are delighted to have him join us and well done and good luck with all your work for the future in your writing career and Harris with your publishing, obviously. I just want to thank our wonderful attendees who have joined us today. And just a reminder, this week we call it the Children's Mac Fest week and we've got a real treat for you. Just we started off today with books. Tomorrow we've got exhibition of paintings, mural artwork. And then on Wednesday, we've got Islamic calligraphy, mashallah. Then on Thursday, we have Persian cookery cuisine from Persia. And then on Friday, we've got puppet show for young children. And on Saturday, mashallah, we've got Egyptian culture and heritage. So we've got lots of evenings, lots of packed uh, events. So please, please do join us. So thank you for joining us, giving us your time. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your meal as I am going to in a few minutes. And good night and assalamu alaikum.